Hi, it's nice to see you again. Hope you had a good vacation. This year is dedicated to Rachel Bas Rav Chaim Tzvi, Le'ilu What we're going to be talking about today is um, getting across the Inyanim of Elul, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur to children of different ages. So let's start with Elul. The first thing is that, um, unfortunately, in many places, Elul doesn't exist. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. Of course, Elul exists, but um, someone once told me with that when they left Israel and went to America, the calendar got shorter. So I said, what do you mean? So he said, there's no Elul, there's no Shovavim, and there's no three weeks. So, well, of course, that's an exaggeration. Realize that for various reasons, if you want Elul consciousness, it has to come from the home. It's not going to come from the outer environment. What is Elul consciousness? So the Sosemis says it very succinctly. There's a place within Hashem's vast and infinite and unknowable reality where His love for us is so great that nothing can touch it. Nothing. Nothing we do. Not Cheta Egel, not Cheta Miraglim. There's a place within us where our love of Hashem could never be defiled no matter what we do. The theme of Elul is Ani Dodi Vidodili. We have to discover that place of pure love and amuna and yearning for Dvekas within ourselves. And that draws down Vidodili, and then he's for me. He'll, he'll show us the unconditional love and forgiveness that we yearn for. So for adults, the way this takes place, the Ani Dodi, is by making some time, some time for for pushing aside all of the things that make us unaware of that place within us. So this has to do with tshuva, it has to do with cheshbon nefesh, it has to do with, um, at least to some degree, being less involved with nonsense. You could have some way of hearing yourself. A little less, you know, a little less politics, a little less talking about important matters such as whether black will still be in for formal wear or whatever a little bit more room for being in touch with yourself on the deepest level. And this was Hashem's presence in us, which is what Slichot is, which is what the Yud Gimel Midas HaRachimim are. So that's what Elul is for us. How do we translate that to children? So the easiest way is to tell a child that you could only tell what something is at the end. What does that mean? Let's say I'm making a cake for Shabbos. And I put in all of the right things, sugar, flour, margarine, water, eggs, flavorings, chocolate chips, whatever. You know. How will I know if it came out good? Will I know it when I put everything in the mixing bowl? Do I know if it'll come out good then? No. Do I know when I turn on the mixer? No. Do I know when I taste it when it's still better? Well, it's getting closer, but not for sure. When do I know if it came out good? So the answer is, when it comes out of the oven and I taste it. Then, all of the things I did before, all of those things made the cake be what it is now. If I would have skipped the sugar, it wouldn't taste sweet. If I would have forgotten the flour, it wouldn't have substance, etc., etc. Elul is the end of the year. Who we were this year shows up in who we are in Elul. Now picture this. You're making a cake for Shabbos and you have somebody very important coming. Let your kids tell you who they think is important. It's sometimes interesting to hear. The most important person is coming. So this might be your older kid's chassan, or your husband's boss, or Moshe Rabbeinu, whoever, you know. Rav Kanievsky, whoever, the Rebbe, whoever your kid will think of the most important person. So you decided you want to make a special, nice meal. So you put in the flour, you put in the sugar, you put in the margarine, you put or oil or whatever to make your cake. It didn't come out good. And it's too late. The stores are all closed. And you don't have another cake in the freezer. And it's not good. 
it's kind of lopsided, maybe it's a little burnt, it doesn't look good, it doesn't taste good, it's embarrassing. Now suppose there was something you could do that was magic, that all you have to do is something special, and you know what? The cake turns out good. Even though it was already finished, the magic something takes it all the way back. It becomes ingredients again, and it's in the mixing bowl again. Only this time you let it mix long enough, and it goes in the oven again, and this time it bakes even. 